Um, in this lesson, we're going to be solving radicals equal to a number or a variable. So still pretty simple. It's just slightly more complex. And then, um, but you'll, it's the same concept, same steps as yesterday, okay? So these are the steps. If you're in the video, write these down. I'm going to move on now. Okay, numbers 1 and 2. Okay, so number 1, we're always checking to make sure we have a radical sign that is isolated. It doesn't matter what... Uh, if one or the other one is not, in this case, there's only rad one radical sign. Yesterday, we had two radical signs, but we have one radical sign. It's already isolated on one side of this equal sign. So this one's real nice and convenient because I could just start working it out. So in order to get rid of a radical sign, you do its opposite action, which is squaring it. And whenever you square uh, one side of the equation, you're going to square the other side. And I always put parentheses around one side because when we work on more complex problems on Monday... You're going to really need to have that down because you'll be multiplying. All right, so we got 2n minus 10 squared. This cancels out with the square, so we got 2n minus 10 is equal to, and then 2 squared is 4. So now this is a basic, uh, you know, two-step problem from pre-algebra. Adding 10 on both sides, 2n is equal to 14. Divide both sides by 2, and we get n is equal to 7. Okay. All right, and of course we check to see if it's an extraneous solution. So I'm just kind of, I could do this part in my head if I need to. Two times n is 14. Four, 14 minus 10 is four. Right. So we know that it's a positive um, radical sign, so it's not extraneous. So we're all good. N is equal to seven. All right. Makes sense. All right. Next one, number two. Okay. Number two, we have a radical sign equal to x. Okay, so this radical, again, is conveniently already, you know, isolated. There's going to be problems today where we don't have that. So, so we're going to square the radical sign and the opposite side because we, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. The radical and the square cancel out, leaving just negative 40 plus 13x is equal to x squared. Okay, so now that I see x squared, x squared is the largest exponent, so I know that since the exponent is 2, but there's going to be two answers. So I want to move everything over to one side and factor it if possible. Okay, so I'm going to add 40 to both sides and subtract 13x to both sides. When I do that, these go away, leaving just 0 on the left side. On the right side, I have x squared uh, minus 13x plus 40. Okay, and now this is a Xbox problem, so we're going to solve. I already know how to do this, so 1a and a are here. a times c is positive 40, um, and then b is negative 13. So we have negative 8 and negative 5 are going to be our factors that multiply to 40 but add up to negative 13. So we got 0 is equal to x minus 8 times x minus 5. Okay, so x minus 8 is equal to 0, and x minus 5 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 8, and x is equal to 5. So these are your two answers. Now we're just going to double check that they're not extraneous. So focusing on just this particular um, radical sign, we're just going to plug in 8 into x first. So we have negative 40 times 13 times 8. Okay, 13 times 8 is, let's see, two side problem, 24, I think it's 104. Yeah, 104. So 13 times 8 is 104, so we have negative 40 plus 104, which is going to be 64. That's good. That one's not negative. If I do 5, I know that 5 times 13 is, or 5 times 13 is 65, minus 40 is 25. So we're good. These are both uh, non not extraneous. So we're all good on these two examples. Okay? Any questions on numbers one or two? Okay, so let's have, it's Friday, so let's have one start today. Ones are talking to twos about number one. How did I do that? Num and then twos talk to the ones about number two. Ready, set, and talk. Okay, so number three. We know that step one is isolate the radical sign, okay, or a radical sign. Is the radical sign here isolated, everyone, on number three? Is this isolated by no. itself? No. 
No, it's not. So what's next with that needs to move away? Add the four, okay, so that's it. That's totally fine. Let's add four to both sides. And when we do that, we can isolate the radical sign. So we have radical negative six minus two x is equal to positive two, okay? Now it's isolated. Now I can square both sides. Okay. I want you to finish the problem now. We've got negative 6 minus 2x is equal to 4. And I'll come around and check your work. Okay, so in this one, we're adding 6 and dividing by negative 2. When you get that, you get x is equal to negative 5 as your final answer. Okay, that's number 3. Okay, number 4. Number 4. Write this down, please, and then turn to your neighbor and tell them what would be your first step. Okay, so did, is the radical sign isolated, yes or no? No, because no, it's like saying three times this radical, right? Yes. What's the opposite of multiplying by three? Divide. Dividing by three. So we need to divide both sides by three, and what ends up happening is three divided by three is just one. So we have r over two, and its radical sign is equal to eight. Okay, work this one out, please. r is equal to 128, so you have to square both sides first. If you didn't get this one, uh, there were more people that didn't get it, so... So you get r over 2 is equal to 64. Then you have to multiply both sides by 2 because r is being divided by 2. So these cancel out, leaving r is equal to one, uh, 64 times 2, which is 128. Okay. Any questions on these two? If you made a mistake, please fix it. All right, continuing, number 5. Okay, I'll start number 5 and work it out with you, and then you'll finish it. Okay, on number 5 is the uh, radical isolated. Good, okay, but this one's convenient. So so we're going to square the radical, and whatever we do on one side, we have to do the other side. So we have b squared is equal to uh, negative 14 plus 9b, okay? And I'm going to combine like terms now, so we're going to add, or actually I'm going to, not combine like terms, I'm going to move all of my... Um, equation to one side, so I'm adding 14 and 9b to both sides, leaving, so it's going to be b squared plus 9b uh, plus 14, or, I'm sorry, I'm not adding 9b, I'm subtracting 9b. My bad, let me fix that again. So, adding 14, subtracting 9b, so we got b squared minus 9b plus 14 is equal to 0, okay? Now this is an Xbox problem, right? So this is something we did regularly. So why don't you work that out? I'll have you finish it off. Seven and two are the correct answers here. Xbox, of course, we have, let's get a multiply to be positive 14, but it adds up to negative nine. It's negative seven, negative two. So you got B minus seven times B minus two equals to zero. And of course, B is equal to seven and b is equal to 2, right? And are these are any of these extraneous? Did you check? Yes. yes. Yeah, they're not extraneous, right? Good. Last one. This one's by yourself. Ready, set, go. In case you didn't get it, square both sides. You get 110 minus n is equal to n squared. Add n and subtract 110. So you got n squared plus n minus 110 is equal to 0. So it's going to be n minus or n plus 11 times n minus 10 is all equal to zero. So n is equal to negative 11, and as n is equal to 10, and that's it. Okay. Are any of these uh, extraneous? Let's see. We got 110 minus a negative 11 is going to be 121. That's good. And n minus 10 is 100. Yeah, this is good. Awesome. All right. Cupcakes, right? Y'all got it? Questions? What about the other end? Is it in a square root? No. Okay. So it could be anything, right? So when we check for extraneous solutions, we're always looking for, we're thinking we cannot have a negative square root, right? Because that would be um, no solution or an imaginary solution. Okay.
Anyways, that concludes this lesson. What I'd like you to do is...